<laughs> yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see all of you this morning and welcome to Asbury St. James United Methodist Church on this very first Sunday in the season of Lent. We are now 40 days away from Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, in the United Methodist Church and in the Christian Church throughout the world. I welcome all of you this morning and I see at least a half a dozen visitors today and the first one that I can remember the name of is Samantha Gray from Eastern North Carolina who is here visiting, visiting with us for the very first time and she is a graduate student at the University of South Carolina and she is in the house of God and we are glad that she is here today. There are many others that are here today that I didn't get the opportunity to say good morning to, but I'm going to say good morning to you right now as we begin this worship service this morning, and I will continue to speak with you as we go through the day. Now let us begin this day as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Most dear and heavenly Father, O oh righteous God, we need your presence in our lives if we are to resist temptation. Oh, Father, send your angels to minister to each of us when the tempter comes to call. Oh, Father, put not our hearts to the test, but shelter us in your protective love. Oh, Father, for you are our God and we are your people. It is in the precious name of the risen Christ that we do pray. Amen. And now let's all stand together and sing our opening hymn, found on page 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let us all stand and sing.
church in our morning call to worship, which is found on the first page of your bulletins. Please respond to this call to worship this morning. Temptation surrounds each of us every day. Opportunities to stray litter in our paths. Though we may stumble and fall, God's mercy will pick us all up. God's grace and precious us all. Therefore be glad in the Lord and rejoice. God's love leads us here. And can somebody for that just say amen? Amen. amen? It's good to see you all this morning. You are strong in voice and you are lovely in your presence. And now let us rejoice with the holy word found in the Psalter in Psalm 32, verses 1 through 5. It is found in the back of the United Methodist Hymnal on page 766. Today's reading from the 32nd Psalm will be Psalm 1 through 5. Let us respond. And before I start that, let me... Let me remind you of the season of Lent, a time of repentance, a time of giving up, a time of asking that God would be with us even more so and cover our sins more than ever. They're spoken of this day and you're going to reaffirm God's power. Blessed are those whose transgressions is forgiven. Blessed are those whom the Lord does not hold guilty and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I did not declare my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, then you forgave the guilt of my sin. Show today at Dodge Street, and you're done, aren't you? How many shows did we do? 
22? Probably about, uh, yeah, four, four a week, a few weeks. So. 21, 22 shows. He finishes up the day after 21 shows at Dock Street in the play Ingubinga. And uh, I, I'm going to be glad to see you finish so you'll have less stress as well. <laughs> So God bless you, Luke. Come on and, and share your voice and your talents with us right now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the seasonal event. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's, you know, the perfect opportunity to um, look into ourselves. And uh, I think it's all about rebirth. And I think this song, uh, this song goes right along with that. This one's a uh, old chunk of old. I'm just an old chunk of coal, but I'm gonna be a diamond someday. I'm gonna grow and glow till I'm so blue, pure, perfect. I'm gonna put a smile on everybody's face. But I'm gonna kneel and pray. I should become vain along the way. I'm just an old chunk of coal now, but I'm gonna be a diamond someday. I'm gonna learn the right way to talk. I'm gonna search and find a better way to walk. I'm gonna sit and polish my old rough edge itself till I get of every single flaw But I'm gonna be the world's best friend I'm gonna go around shaking everybody's head I'm gonna be the cotton picking rage of the age Oh, I'm gonna be a diamond someday I'm just an old chunk of coal now, Lord But I'm gonna be Someday. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to all ask my friend Josh Austin to come to the altar today, to come up into the steps of this pulpit, and to read the Holy Word of God as Josh comes to us today to read. And Josh is now back from Costa Rica, and he went there on a fishing trip, and he said, Pastor Tim, Oh, I didn't even get to fish. It blew 30 miles an hour in the water the whole time I was there. So I just got to hang out and watch the wind blow across the ocean. Well, Josh, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm glad you're back. And I'm glad you had the presence to know not to get in a fishing boat with 30 mile an hour wood and grins out in the Costa Rican oceans. Had the captain want to take off, I probably would have had it. Okay. Well, God bless you, brother. I'm looking forward to hearing the word of God by your voice today. Your grandma is here as well, all the way from Myrtle Beach. Your mom and your dad is here. Your wife is here. And your little baby girl, Jolie, is here. We hear your voice. Now bring it to us. All right. And let us hear the word of God. And it is right here before you. Uh, it's on my pulpit. And let me make sure, uh, I think there's one other sheet you might need um, that you heard read for you as well. Let me make sure it's here as well. Like it's underneath this, Josh. No, I don't know it's not here. So you know what it's like. Uh, Her music had it there. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The two readings this morning are uh, the first one is from Genesis 2 15, 17, and 3 1 through 7. The Lord God took the human and settled him in the Garden of Eden to farm it and to take care of it. The Lord God commanded the human, Eat your fill from all the garden's trees. But don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because on the day you eat from it, you will die. The snake was the most intelligent of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say that you shouldn't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, we may eat the fruit of the garden's trees, but not the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. God said, don't eat from it and don't touch it or you will die. The snake said to the woman, you won't die. God knows that on the day you eat from it, you will see clearly and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
The woman saw that the tree was beautiful with delicious food and that the tree would provide wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it and also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate it. Then they both saw clearly and knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made garments for themselves. The second reading from the New Testament is Romans 5, 12 through 19. So in the same way that sin entered the world through one person and death came through sin, so death spread to all human beings with the result that all sinned. Although sin was in the world since there was no law, it wasn't taken into account until the law came. But death ruled from Adam until Moses. Even over those who didn't sin in the same way Adam did, Adam was a type of one who was coming. But the free gift of Christ isn't like Adam's failure. If many people died through what one person did wrong, God's grace is multiplied even more for many people with the gift of the one person, Jesus Christ, that comes through grace. The gift isn't like the consequences of one person's sin. The judgment that came from one person's sin led to punishment, but the free gift that came out of many failures led to the verdict of acquittal. If death ruled because of one person's failure, those who receive the multiplied grace and the gift of righteousness will even more certainly rule in life through the one person, Jesus Christ. So now the righteous requirements necessary for life are met for everyone through the righteous act of one person. Just as judgment fell on everyone through the failure of one person. Many people were made righteous through the obedience of one person, just as many people were made sinners through the disobedience of one person. May God add his holy blessing to these readings. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much. Well done. Next time, bring us back some fish, John. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, let us gather our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And I know that there are those who have prayer requests, and our usher, Larry Barnage, has got has the prayer basket. He's going to come down the center aisle. So if you have filled out a prayer request this morning, go ahead and give it to Larry. And Larry or Jewel One will bring it down to the center aisle. Also this morning, Jewel is flashing the life-touching cards, and they are available this morning. For those of you who do not know about this ministry, we have a ministry at Asbury St. James that's extremely simplistic, but extremely successful. And that is sending cards to college students and also senior citizens and those who cannot come to us every Sunday in our church. And we try to reach out to them through the gift of card ministry. So this morning, if you would like to send one, it already has a stamp on it. It already has a self-addressed envelope. All it is is a blank card inside with perhaps a cross. And you can touch somebody's life with your words this morning. And I believe the last one seems to be going to Pam Prestigar. Thank you, Jewel. And thank you, Pam. Great ministry. Thank you, Larry. We welcome Larry back to our service. As he, as I explained to you last week, we prayed for Larry. He had fallen and hurt himself. And he's doing much better now. And uh, he's here at church. And we thank God for that. And we thank God that Michelle and Larry have returned to our sanctuary today. Larry, we continue to pray for you as you make sure everything is all right after your fall. If you would permit me, I will take just a second to go over a few things in the bulletin as we are at halftime now in this service. And I want to catch you up on just a few things. The flowers this morning are on the altar and they're given to the glory of God and in honor of Caitlin Kamer's birthday, who is turning 15 years old tomorrow. They are given by her grandparents, Joe and Mary Boyd. And looking to the future, there are five Sundays in April, and I have suggested to the church 
that we would like to have a fifth Sunday dinner on April the 30th as we now move into the spring season and out of the cold months of fall winter we would like to plan this fifth Sunday dinner if something like this is interesting to you and you feel compelled to be able to commit to it and perhaps bring a covered dish and we will work out the rest of it please just let Herb and I know so that we can go ahead and make further plans. I already heard from uh, Bernice Walters this week. She gets a head start on reading the bulletin each week. And I believe she must have read it online or heard about it through somebody. And Bernice already sent me a message and said, I'm in favor of a fifth Sunday dinner. So Tommy and Bernice, uh, we plan on seeing you on that fifth Sunday dinner. If you want to raise your hand right now and you're in favor of that fifth Sunday dinner, raise your hand and we'll get together and break bread on the fifth Sunday of the month of April. I believe it's unanimous, so we're going to plan. Amen? Say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Also listed in your bulletin today is uh, Mrs. Barbara Shaw's new address. She is living in uh, 1445 Blue Water Way, apartment 105, Charleston, South Carolina, 29414. Um, and she would love to get a new uh, little card or something from you all to uh, welcome her to her new place. She's living west of the Ashley, where she has rounded the clock care and an opportunity to be around others as well. So we uh, pray for that this morning. Also this morning, I want to recognize the March birth day. This church believes in celebrating the birthdays. And if you're here today, just raise your hand if you are called by your birthday. The 4th of March is Georgia Myrick. The 14th is Madison Square March. The 20th is Pat Turner. And the 31st is Adrian Westendorf. March anniversaries are Tim and Darlene Workman. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds as we go to the Lord in prayer. The following prayer requests are before the people. Please, this is from Doris Gavin. And Doris, you're hearing me good through my microphone this morning to you? Right, thank you. Excellent. Doris would like to raise a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Praise and thanksgiving for Paul Gower on his 90th birthday. Paul is my brother-in-law and my husband, Bill Gather's brother. And we just praise God for his 90th birthday. And I happen to know that, that uh, Paul and his wife and Tim, Tim Bill Gather watch us every Sunday. So I can tell you that probably between four and six tonight, Paul Gather is going to know happy birthday to you from Asbury St. James United Methodist Church. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, it is received. Also this morning, we want to ask to pray for the God Better children, uh, Will and Nan, and also peace for Ukraine, and also the earthquakes that have hit Turkey, and also someone is petitioning God with prayer this morning to help scientists find a cure for cancer. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. it is received. There is an unspoken prayer request before the church. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We are thankful to have my mom and Stanley in with us today in worship. Wednesday is my mother, Desiree Hobbs, 92nd birthday. So Desiree, where are you? You're back there on the back row sitting with Dee and your son Stanley. Let us just tell you already, happy birthday, 92 years. And from where I'm standing, you're looking awfully good. So God bless you. Desiree, happy birthday. Lord, in your mercy. Many happy returns at the second. Also this morning before the church, please remember Dan Childress as he has now gone six months test in Houston tomorrow after his stem cell transplant. So we continue to pray for that situation that the cancer will stay away and that the stem cell will hold what it already is doing. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. it is received. Any others this morning who would like to verbally give us a prayer? Yes, please. I, I've got a friend um, that's, that, that's gotten an infection and it's spread to her blood, so she's in the hospital for a day or two. 
she's on antibiotics and uh, young person. Yeah, my Miles age. Charleston. Yeah. Has a, a virus that is now in the bloodstream and she's now in the hospital. Mm -hmm. What do you know her name? Abby. Abby. The name Abby is before the church. Lord in your mercy. Your prayers. It is received. Yes, Kelly. My friend Kathy Lee, she's already had three cancer surgeries and she's getting ready to go in for a fourth. Kathy Lee preparing for her fourth cancer surgery. We need to pray for her. Is she a mother? Does she have children? She, she's raising her two grandchildren. Both of her children are passed. And she's raising her two grandchildren. Say her name again. Kathy Lee. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. It is received. Um, someone else I'm back there. Jewel, yes. Joyce Tullis' family as they travel today back to their homes. Lord, in your mercy. We are great. Sandra West. Your friend is going to have surgery very soon. Dr. Jim Shearer, Fayetteville, North Carolina. We pray for his wife and his three sons, Owen and Miles, as well as the third son, who has slipped my mind real quick. Hmm? Andrew. Andrew. Andrew actually has put his life on hold. He's the middle child, and he has taken care of his father in their house for about the last three to four to five years as he has continued to progress with Parkinson's disease. I know that Dr. Shearer is watching us now. Uh, he communicates to me daily through texting and emails. He watches this service one, two, three, four, five times. He has already told you that you all are the light of the world. He has now come to a point where he has given up trying to control what's going to happen medically at Duke Medical Center in Durham, North Carolina on March the 7th. And when they go into his brain, he and I have discussed what may happen and what we are hoping will not happen. So we have specific prayers in place. Lord, in your mercy, also this morning, I want to reach behind me. These are about the 15 or 20 prayers of the people that we hear Wednesday morning and Wednesday afternoon on Ash Wednesday. And they hand wrote their prayers and we will be praying over these prayers through the season of Lent throughout the next 40 days. And I'm going to fold them so that they are separate. And they have crosses in the middle of them. And I'm going to also pray for these this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayers. Any other prayer requests this morning? Mama, I'm praying for you and your new residence at the Benton House. That God would co comfort you. That God would give you a peace and a new home with the opportunity today to meet new friends and be in a new environment. And that you will blossom where God has planted you at this time. And I know you, Mom, you will do that. Lord, in your mercy, your mercy. it is received. Anybody else this morning? Anybody else? Now, I did not get to meet all the visitors this morning. And the names were not written down. Is there anyone that would like to stand up this morning and introduce the person that is visiting with them today. It, this is, oh, yes, Pauline yes, Lennox. this is my friend, Jen Tolliver from Tulsa. Jen, it's so good to see you. God bless you. All the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Welcome to Charleston, to the low country. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jim Shop, Jim, yes, Jim. You may remember my first cousin, Kathleen Brunson, uh, who's joined us before. She's come all the way from Sullivan's Island. Amen. <laughs> Kathleen, I know exactly who you are. You were here Christmas Eve. You've probably been here 10 other times. And I'll just let you know that Jim Myrick refers to you as his favorite cousin. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to get too involved, but Jim, you know, what the family is beautiful. And God bless you, Kathleen, and your family. We spoke about them and I enjoyed seeing your son and your daughter on Christmas Eve as we had our candlelight service as well. Lord, in your mercy. Your Anyone else this morning? All right. 
Lenny, all the way from Myrtle Beach. That's right, brother. This is Joe Lee's great grandmother. She's been here for Breast of Newton. She accompanied us this morning at uh, Breast of Peace uh, celebrating her 90th birthday next month. Wow. Oh, yeah. Let's give her a hand of applause. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what. There's something about coming to Asbury that makes you live longer. <laughs> when I got here 18 years ago, there were nine women over 90. Wow, wow. And one of them lived to be 102. <laughs> so longevity is in the water of this beautiful house of God. So God bless all of y'all. Um, I'm so glad to see Bernice and Tommy Walters back in this church today. Let's give them a hand. I just praise God when I get to see you. We talk all week. And I know what's going on. And for you to get in the car and get as dressed up as you two look, you look beautiful. And drive on downtown Charleston from James Island, all I can say is, God will reward you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now let us pray. Most dear and heavenly Father, the prayers of the people are before you this day. Oh, Father, they're varied. They're different in each and every way. But, Father, they're also so specific because they've been brought before Jesus Christ. And we know that all things are possible through Jesus. And now we're going to petition him with these prayers that have been raised before him and ask him to take them to the foot of the Father. And oh, Father God, would you act upon each and every one of these situations? They're so different in so many different ways. But oh, Father, they're all given with the love of the people who know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, we thank you for our visitors this morning. We thank you for Ann Gadosh, who has come all the way from New Jersey, back to her southern home in Charleston, to be with the people of Asbury St. James. And Father, we thank you for Ann and all that she does and all that she stands for. And we thank you for the blessings of her beautiful piano playing, as she, in conjunction with our maestro Herb Spear, played that opening song this morning. Oh, Father, now be with us. Keep us. And oh, Father, through the season of Lent, protect each of us. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now we will worship God with our tithes and our offerings, as we together enjoy the beautiful playing of Anne Gadosh and Herb Spear this morning. They have prepared and practiced a beautiful song together for this first Sunday of Lent. And if you would please come forward with your tithes and offerings to the altar. Mm -hmm.
We have been given many things. Oh, Father, on this first Sunday in Lent, may we come now before you and just give a portion of what we have so graciously accepted on your behalf. Oh, Father, we ask now that you would, you would multiply these gifts, that you would work within them to bring the glory of God to the people in this area of Asbury St. James. To the young man who came this morning because he was hungry to our food pantry early as one of our church members arrived in their car to refill the pantry. Oh, Father, I saw the glory of God this morning, and it is made possible by the gifts of the people. We pray in the holy name of God. Amen. You may be seated. If the church would please join me in the words of assurance, they are found in the middle of page two of your bulletin. And once again, we will see the verbiage in these words of assurance that leads us to know that we are sinful in nation sinful in nature and that our sins will be covered and forgiven by Christ our, our, our Savior. Everybody okay back there? I heard someone fall. You okay? Okay. I heard someone else fall. <laughs> Y'all get out the walkers and make sure everybody's okay. All right. Julie, you okay? Praise the Lord. <laughs> now let us together join in the call to worship. We worship the one who forgives our transgressions and covers our sin. Rejoice and be glad, for God's mercy is greater than our failings. God's grace is greater than our sin. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now the preaching gospel this morning is the gospel according to St. Matthew. I will be using chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, but I'm going to use pastor's discretion, and you know I love to follow the 2020 rule, which is you go back 20 verses before and go 20 verses after, and you get the full inflection of the particular gospel reading. And at the top of my message Bible, and most of you have these by now. I hope you brought them with you. Um, I'm going to start with Jesus that appeared for his baptism. And then I will start with chapter 4. So please follow along as I do so. Jesus then appeared at the Jordan River from his hometown of Galilee. He wanted John, his cousin, to baptize him. His cousin looked at him as Jesus stood by the shores of the river. And John objected. He said, Jesus, I am the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus insisted. He said, do it, John. God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is getting ready to come together right now. And it is starting with my baptism. So Cousin John did as Jesus requested. The moment Jesus came up out of the baptismal waters, the skies opened and he saw God's Spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing upon him. And along with the Spirit voice saying this, This is my Son, chosen and marked by my love, the delight of my life. So now you understand where we are through the end of Jesus' baptism. Now can you tell me what happens immediately after the baptism? He goes into the wilderness. Jesus is expelled into the wilderness to be challenged by Satan. The beginning of chapter 4. Next, Jesus was taken by the Spirit for the test. The devil was ready to give it. He had planned his game. Jesus also was prepared for the test.
by fasting 40 days and 40 nights. That left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger, which the devil recognized and immediately took advantage of it in the first test. He said, Jesus, since you are God's son, speak the word that will turn these stones that surround us in the desert into loaves of bread. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy. What would any good Jewish young man do that had studied the Torah his entire life in the synagogue? He knew it by verse. And he quoted Deuteronomy and he said this to Satan. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from the mouth of God. Well, the devil pondered and he said, okay, for the second test. And he took him to the holy city, looking out onto the holy city. And he sat him on top of the temple and he said, since you are God's son, just jump. The devil goaded him by quoting Psalm 91. He said these words, he has placed in you the care of angels. They will catch you, Jesus, so that you won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Jesus looked back at Satan and he said, I will counter that with another citation from the book of Deuteronomy, which says, don't dare your father. Don't ever test the Lord your God. And then for the final test, the devil took him to the peak of a huge mountain. He gestured expansively, pointing out all of the earth's kingdom and how glorious they all were. And then he said, Jesus, they're all yours. Lock, stock, and barrel. All you have to do, Jesus, is go down on your knees and worship. And everything on earth is yours. Jesus' refusal at this point was no longer polite. But the biblical text says that he was turned. Be it, Satan. He backed his rebuke with a third quotation from Deuteronomy, which says, Worship the Lord your God and only Him. Serve Him with absolute, single heartiness. And the test was over. The devil left. And in his place, angels came and took care of all of Jesus' needs. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Thank you God. Let us pray. Most dear and heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of every heart gathered in this room today be acceptable in your holy name. Amen. Church, I want to start by asking you something this morning. And as I always love to do, I, I, I enjoy asking you all a question because I believe it kind of... Um, is, is what, as my Chinese tailor says, it, it, it hooks you, it hooks you. So I'm trying to hook you this morning. <laughs> Would you all agree that there are times in our lives that we are all tempted? If you would agree, just say amen. amen. Would you also agree that there are times in our life where the temptation is so great did we fall to that temptation? If so, say amen. amen. Not as strong, but you said. Do you believe that each one of us are often tempted to turn our thoughts and our actions in a direction that often are not pleasing to God? If so, say amen. 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 I would say to you of the people of South Carolina, and particularly the low country of Charleston, South Carolina, including my friend from Tulsa, Oklahoma, that has come this morning to be with Pauline, and my new friend from Eastern North Carolina, I'm going to say that all of you all, and our visitors from the Southern Island, you all are going to know right now what I'm talking about, and even Ann Gadox from New Jersey. Because you, we just don't, you got, you got a sweet tea in your blood, girl. You chalk that. And once you get your feet in that blood, blood and go crabbing and eat some fried shrimp 
and walk down on the back, you know who you are. I said and say to you this week, and I hesitate to bring this up, but I am compelled to say that we all have gotten a lesson this week and have heard the cries and the words of our media outlets of the tragic results of temptation, misleading, and murder in the low country of South Carolina by a prominent man. And I will say to you, church, that we may never be tempted to turn stones into bread or even be tempted to jump off a cliff, but we are often tempted to lose our identity as children of God. Can somebody agree with me and say amen? Amen. And when we do that, we become lost in our weakness. I once read a church sign one Sunday during the season of Lent. And when I called a Sunday school class when I was a lay person 25, 30 years ago or so, and Tina and I started, we were the only two people in that class at one point. You remember that. It was taught by the pastor, and then he said, No, Tim, you're going to start teaching it because this class only has you and your wife in it. I challenge them each Sunday as they travel to the city of South Carolina, North Carolina, wherever God may take them. To write down some of the church signs that you see. Because I wanted in my mind to keep them focused on church. And on Sunday morning they would come back to the church and we had a little basket. T, you remember this. And they said, oh, I heard a good one this week. Yeah. And they put it in the basket and we'd read it before we get started. And I remember my mama finding me a little, a book. I still have it, mama. A book of church signs all over America. And a beautiful hardback book with colored pictures. And the church sign said this in the season of Lent. Posted, forbidden fruit has resulted in many a jam. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the story that I read of one night prior to supper. And I, was, I, I recognized this story because I remember as a child, I, 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 I couldn't wait to eat supper every night. Mama, you were great at putting supper on the table 501. You knew, you, knew the, the, you knew the importance of a deadline, and you knew how hungry my daddy always was. <laughs> Maybe rest in peace. But mom would be in there cooking pork chops and, and, and sweet potato and green beans and lima beans and yellow rice and mashed potatoes. You see, when you got three boys in one household and a hungry husband who's a blue collar worker, you start your love. Else why they're back in the kitchen at 7 o'clock. Lydia, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Don't bring me no, don't bring me no hungry man dinner out of the freezer. <laughs> Mama brought food to the table. But I couldn't wait. And all I'll be standing there and in that pantry with the door closed. I was like, I'm looking for a chocolate bar or some Cheetos. Something. And Mama would say, what are you doing? And I'd write about this little boy one night prior to supper. Billy's mom saw him quietly standing in the pantry. And she said, Billy, what are you doing in that pantry? You know we're getting ready to have dinner. And Billy just responded, Mama, I'm just in here fighting temptation. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there's all kinds of ways that you and I are tempted, church. I remember about two years ago, Sandra West got to church one Sunday. And boy, she was in a tizzy. I said, Sandra, sweetie, what's wrong? The Holy Ghost of Lady, she's running off the road the whole way to church today. And then she got up next to me and she said something ugly to me. And I was so nervous by the time I got here. And Tim, I don't even know what I did. <laughs> and I could tell I had to settle my sister down because she was tempted to wring somebody's neck. <laughs> you say temptation takes on many different colors. As Josh Austin read this morning, many have had the opportunity to make a mistake in their lives, like Adam and Eve. But the trouble with opportunity, church, is that it only knocks, but temptation kicks the door open, and then you're caught. And it causes us to take our eyes off of God. And how many of us have thought we could just coast along for a while without God? 
God and run our own lives. Amen, Kelly? You hear me on that? Because y'all see you looking at me and you, you got that hand shaking. You, you locked and loaded on Pastor Kim this morning. You know what I'm talking about. We've been there. That's why we're here this morning. Trusting in God does not eliminate temptation. But trusting in Jesus eliminates and keeps those that would tempt us away from us. That's why I like hanging out with you all. Because I know y'all got Pastor Tim's back. Doris, you know what I'm talking about. How do I start my day every morning? I text you. A lot of people, I'm sure. A lot of people, I'm sure. But guess what? You're at the top of my 680 contacts, and you get my first text. <laughs> and you see, I know that if I'm investing my time and my life and my words and Ann Gadosh and Pam Prestigar and Kelly and Susan and Pat and so forth, Pat doesn't return any messages, not texting <laughs> But Susan reads it too, because I always tell her. She said, don't worry, I'll let it ensures the victory that we all need over Satan. The season of Lent, church, is a time for us to check ourselves and make adjustments. Would y'all agree with that? Amen. Yes. Again, would y'all agree with that? Lent is a time to recalibrate to God's way of living and loving Jesus. Alicia, that's probably the most important thing I'm going to say today. I'm going to say it again because I, I, I feel like it is very important. Lent is a time to recalibrate to God's way of living and loving the Son, Jesus Christ. Luke recently told me, he said, Daddy, I, I've, got, I've got to confess something to you. And I said, what's that, son? He said, uh, I have failed and I have avoided the computer in my car that's been telling me for some time it's time for an oil change. And he said to me in a very humble moment, he said, Daddy, as a matter of fact, it's past time. <laughs> now, 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 when I gave Luke that call, I didn't go behind him every weekend and say, what kind of gas you running in that car? Are you keeping the car under 40 miles now? Uh, are you letting old ladies cross the street and are you paying attention to the people? I didn't do that. I gave Luke the car and I trusted him to do what he needed to do to keep the car going and to be safe driving. Right, Luke? That's right. But he came to me and he said, Dad, I, I want you to know that this week in my busy schedule at the College of Charleston, and by the way, he just made the president's list again. I got an email <laughs> Friday afternoon, and I know you were holler at me for saying that. <laughs> but as Susan Bullock told me a few weeks ago, oh no, I want to hear about Luke because we're walking him through college. And we're guarding him from any evil in his life. That's why he's here every here, 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 Sunday pastor. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the pastor being taught a lesson by a mm -hmm. But Luke said to me recently, he said, Daddy, I've made it a party this week to service the car so I will not have any problems in the future. Did, did y'all hear that? And what's he doing? He's going to service the car by having his oil change. So he doesn't have any problems in the future. Now, I'm going to say to you this morning, aren't we like this in many ways? We all need spiritual maintenance. Jesus did not come to this world to condemn us, but to save us, whether you understand it or not, whether you agree with it or not, or whether you realize it. That was the reason for Jesus coming. He came to save, not to change and criticize and doubt. As Christians, we are in the middle of a heated battle. But sadly, many Christians today are wasting time fighting the wrong enemy. You may ask, well, Pastor Tim, who's the enemy? I sound like Trey Gabby now. Who's the enemy? I didn't ask you who, where he lives. I said, who's the enemy? How many? Negativity. Somebody say amen. Do you understand that word? Amen. Hate. Amen. Criticism. Amen. Lying. Amen. Gossip. Amen. Cheating. Amen. Discouragement. Amen. 
infidelity? Amen. Not treating your neighbor as yourself? Amen. They all lead to bad results, church. They tear us down. They don't build us up. They tear us down. And you and I, we have the power to be a blessing to one another each and every day. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of move on and I'm going to wrap it up real quick. Because the sun is out. Gosh, I want to get some sun today. I love the sun. I get power from the sun. You do too, Emily? Amen. Amen. Girlfriend, you, you love that sun, don't you? I'm glad you're here today. You were here last Sunday and had a little bit of a wheezing going on. And you took some, some medicine beforehand and you were asleep during my sermon. But today, you, you bright eyed and bushy tailed in the lid. You see, I remember when I baptized you when you was about this big. And your brother Trent. You all may have noticed that there were some folks walking around town this week with a black smudge right in the middle of their foreheads. These are symbols of Ash Wednesday. And we, and we imparted those smudged crosses on foreheads right here in Salt Lake on Wednesday between 959 and 1231. And I'm going to say to you this morning that these are symbols of Ash Wednesday, but I'm going to tell you what they're also a symbol of. They're a symbol of the grief for the things that we have done wrong and resulting in us to be divided from God. They're the dirty little smudges that we leave behind when we don't live according to God's will. They tear us down. They don't build us up. And they have the power to be a blessing or a curse. Wednesday 12, excuse me, Wednesday 959, the first two candidates for Ash Wednesday were a couple, a woman that I had met last year. And she came all the way back here because she felt like this house of God was so important last year on Ash Wednesday. And I recall that last year when I served her with the imposition of ashes and I prayed over her and I put my arms on her side, on her shoulders, and I said, God loves you. And it is from ashes that you came and ashes that you will return. And I saw the tear go down her face and she took a little linen box with her that day before we were packing up a year ago. Here she comes back in the sanctuary with that linen box full of her tithes and offerings for the month of Easter. And she was so compelled by our service a year ago that this past Wednesday she brought a brother. And they met here and came in and received the holy grace of Jesus Christ on Ash Wednesday. And then there was another person, and I was compelled for some reason. I only did this once. I was standing all around. I was listening to her beautiful piano music. I sat over here for hours and prayed. I knelt there and prayed. I sat here and prayed. For two and a half hours, I went to different places in the church. And God said, Tim, get up and walk to the door. And I did, and as I did, I walked out into the vestibule, and my eyes fell upon a lady standing across the street at 12 o'clock at the corner of St. Martin Street and Rutledge Avenue. And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and I had on a black suit with a clerical collar, and so it was obvious who I was, and she smiled, and, and I went, just like that. What did I show her? Love. 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 Hands of receptive. At Duke Divinity School, they taught us how to stand with our arms open. Can you believe that? We had a class on preaching, and we had to learn how to stand and how far our arms are to be apart and what our hands should look like. I had never forgotten that. And as she looked at me and she walked across the street, I, I looked at her and she, she had her cell phone with her and she, she looked at me and she said, uh, Hello. She spoke into her phone and she said, and it printed out, I am from Ukraine. And she started crying. Hmm. May I come in and pray? 
Yes, you may. God is here. Thank you. And she came in and she probably stayed 45 to 50 minutes and she sat about where Emelina sat, sitting right there. And she, we talked and she went through the four prayer station and then she came to the altar rail to have ashes put on her forehead and she had on her little phone. Please pray for me. Today is the one year anniversary of my father's death in Ukraine from the Russians' war. And it hit me. How small a little town we live in. But how big a little world has God given us to serve. You see, she did not speak English and I certainly didn't speak Ukrainian. But we spoke the language of God's presence through the Holy Spirit. And I'm here today to tell you that God's light shines through the cross of Jesus Christ in every moment that we live faithfully. And I believe that we need to bloom where we are planted. In Luke chapter 6 verse 45 it says, The mouth speaks with what the heart is full of. So I say to you through this 40 day journey known as Lent, let each of you speak words of joy, not words of doubt. Speak words of love, not words of condemnation. And let us prepare our 40-day journey to Easter Sunday with a joy-filled spirit. I am not convinced that God is fully interested in what we choose to give up for 40 days, but then we turn to eating chocolate again. Do you get me, church? Say it again. Amen. But I will say to you this morning in closing, that God is very interested in us giving up the sins in our lives, which will make Easter even more joyous. Let us pray. Most dear and heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy. We thank you for the forgiveness. We thank you for the visitors. We thank you for connecting the dots at 754 Rutledge Avenue in Charleston, South Carolina. We thank you for those that we do know, for those we don't know, and for those we get ready to know. <laughs> oh, Lord, bless us in a most powerful way as we journey through Lent together. And right here at Asbury St. James United Methodist Church, great things are going to happen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us stand to sing one of the greatest sin songs of all time.
saying that one more time at the bottom of the refrain without the music playing. Ready? It's, hymn, it's number 365 if you just closed your hymn. Ready? Here we go. Grace, grace, God. people of God. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make His face to shine upon you. In the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, may He be